So far in this video series, you've chosen a fabric for your winter coat. We went and found a menu for the two markers that match perfectly back to your fabric. And then we started doing our full color rendering for our model. And this was all in marker from the back. And now in this video, we're going to work on color pencil from the front to get all of our base textures. The tools that you're going to need for this video are going to be the colors you used for your jacket as well as the flesh tone and hair tone for doing her hair and some touch-ups on her skin and face. All of the color pencils that you own plus a piece of fabric for your markers as well as a swatch of the coat material that you're using and then also I'm going to start showing you how to use your sandpaper. At this stage, when you're looking at your model here, she should look a little bit bland, a little bit flat. And what she's ready for now is color pencil and ink. Now, in order to take it to this level, what we're going to do is we're going to be using color pencil here for her hair, as well as her jacket to help give this more texture and depth. And then after we're done, we'll come back and we'll start inking everything to get this to really pop off the page. Now, the inking part you should do last because your color pencil can cover up some of your ink if you do it, the inking first. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do all of my color pencil first, we'll do some mixed media on her glossy boots, and then we'll finish this by inking last. How we're going to go about this is, off to the side here, I'm going to make a swatch color that matches back to what's across from it, and then I'm going to find my color pencils to match. So we'll make a swatch here for the beanie, a swatch here for the uh, main body of the jacket, and we'll make another swatch here for the glossy boots. All right, let's get started on that right now. All right, so let's turn our paper over to the back side and take out your markers that you used for the beanie and the jacket and the boots. All right, for my beanie, all I did was I just used my lightest color for the whole entire beanie. So over here, I want to make a nice square with the same color. I'm laying down my single layer so I can get a sense of what that looks like. And then while it's semi-dry, semi-wet, I'll come in here on the shadow side and just throw a little bit of a mid-tone. And I'll let that dry completely. All right, down here we have the main body for the jacket. And basically, it was the lighter color first, the darker color second. I'm going to do a swatch down here where I have a little more area. I need to do the same exact formula, which is mixing these colors while they're wet and doing the lighter color first, the darker color second. While this is semi-dry, semi-wet, I'll come in here and get some mid-tones. And then I'll let that dry completely. All right, let's come down here to her boots. Basically for the boots, the formula was just to flip-flop the colors. So we're doing the darker color first and the lighter color second. For this one, I want to get a sense of the long boot, so I'm going to make a nice long uh, swatch of color down here. Now I can come back up here to the top, and this is where we did our swatch for the beanie. I already have my mid-tone in here, so I'm going to come in and get a cast shadow. Oh, that's the wrong color. And so that'll duplicate the darkest side of her hat right here. We'll come down here to the jacket swatch. So for doing my cast shadow, I'm using the darker color and then mixing that with the lighter color. And that'll duplicate the darker areas here on her jacket. Now over here on her boots, this is totally dry. So I'm gonna come in and I'll get my darker shadow here for the boots. All right, so what we have now is there's a swatch of color to match what the beanie is, what the jacket is, and what the boots are. 
And I'm noticing really quick here, um, I could go back into the boots and just put a little more cast shadows on there now that they're bone dry, as well as a little bit more here on her legs. Let's go ahead and take care of those right now. All right, so I just want a little more of a cast shadow from the hem of her skirt, as well as her jacket. Then following along this side of her knee, because this is the shadow side of her leg, and underneath her knee right here. On this side here, we have the shadow from the hem, this side of her leg, and then of course underneath her kneecap. Only do this if you realize you haven't done extra shadows yet. If you already did them, don't worry about it. All right, let's come down here to her boots. What I wanna do is, remembering that the light source is here on this side. So I'm gonna come over here to the shadow side. I just wanna emphasize that there's a belt buckle thing going on here. And then also this side of her shoe is totally in the shade. And I'm just gonna do a few dry brush strokes coming out onto the shoe. There's a little bit of some wrinkles going on right here. Some shadows all along this side of the shoe. Let's come over to this leg. Same thing, so this is the shadow side of the shoe. I'm gonna just make it a little bit darker. I'm gonna use some dry brush strokes just coming out onto the shoe. I wanna emphasize this buckle just a little bit more. And then down here we have these wrinkles on her boot. I'll get this side too. And then there should be a cast shadow here on this side of her foot as well as down here on the toe. And that's good enough. I can always add some more from the front when we change to color pencil. I think her legs look good also. Everything else up here, we already got all of our cast shadows. All right, turn this back over to the front and let's start working on our color pencils. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down because while I'm doing the color pencil, I do not want my paper to move at all. Along with our color pencil, we're going to be using some sandpaper. Now on the back of the sandpaper, it'll show you the different grit numbers. So for instance, this is 120 grit, this one is 80 grit, and this one is 60 grit. The smaller the number, the more chunky the grit is. So for instance, when we did the swimsuit, we were using the lighter grit. When we did the jeans, we were using the heavier weight. Now for her beanie, this is gonna be like a cable knit. And so it kinda of has a thick, chunky feel to it with lots of texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my heaviest sandpaper, which is the 60 grit. I wanna start here with the swatch to practice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my sandpaper here behind the paper, so then when I come back and I do color pencil from the front, it's gonna pick up the texture of the sandpaper. Now while we're doing this, the sandpaper cannot move. Once I go from my light color, and then I'm gonna work my way down to a darker color, I want, it, I want the sandpaper to stay exactly where it's at, so we're only getting all of the top pieces from the sandpaper. Now for doing this, what I'm choosing is, for sure I want my white color pencil. And then I'm gonna be looking for a mid-tone. So I'm gonna choose two different green mid-tones, two different blue mid-tones. I'm also including silver in here just to see what that looks like. And then for my darker shadows, I'm choosing two different blue colors and we're gonna test all of them here on this paper to find out what we like the best. 
Now to do this technique, you're gonna want your pencils sharp because we're gonna want lots of color here that's available for using on top of the sandpaper. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in a order. We'll start with our lighter color pencils and we'll work our way down to our darker color pencils. And we'll make sure to keep everything in a row so we know exactly which color pencil matches back to the one that's on the paper swatch. Okay, so what I'm looking for is, I know I love white for my highlights. And then I want some kind of a mid-tone as well as a darker tone. You can see I use my silver to come in here to give it like a little bit of a metallic silver look, but realistically it just looks like a bland gray color. You can decide if you like this or not, but I kind of prefer using a blue color instead of some kind of a gray or black. Between these two, I think I like the, the one that's got a little more of a lighter blue color to it, so that's going to be my base color. For the mid-tones, I really like this mid-tone blue right here. And then for my highlight, I'll use this white. All right, so I wanna carefully wipe away any of the color pencil dust. Now, as I pull out this uh, sheet of sandpaper, here we can see the true bright colors having the white background behind it. And then you can just double check that yes, for sure, that's the color pencils that you like. And we'll do the formula here on the hat. So again, I'm gonna put my 60 grit sandpaper behind this hat. Once I start coloring and shading on here, this sandpaper cannot move because you want all of the little highlights and peaks from the sandpaper to stay in the same place as you do this. Again, here's my light source. So I'm gonna come over and start here on the shadow side and we'll just get some texture on here. And then I have a little bit of some shadow here to make this look like it's round. And then a few little shadows here where the ball is going behind her head. And I'm making sure to keep the same shaping of that little ball as well as here on her hat. Now I'm gonna to switch to my mid-tone and I can come in here, just give this a little bit of some texture and mid-tones and I'm going back on top of some of my darker color pencil. And because the sandpaper has not moved, I'm only coloring on the exact same peaks from the previous color pencil. Now I can come in here with my white and I wanna really make this look like it's bright, textury, and there's a spotlight hitting this side of her head where the light source is and up in here as well. Now the cool thing is with the color pencil, if I did too much white, I can still come back in and knock it down by putting my mid-tone in here. And if I have too much mid-tone, I can come in and knock it down with my darker color pencil. Now I also wanna get a little more detail with my color pencil without the sandpaper here. I can pull the sandpaper out and come back in and get a little more definition on the flat tabletop to really show these shadows here at the corner of her hat. We lost a little bit of that cable knit feel, so I'm gonna come in and just start to get that back. Some nice, crisp, darker shadows here for the little ball in back of her head. And I want to emphasize this brim on her hat. Always keeping in mind where the shadow side of her hat is here and the light side is over here. I'll come into some of these cable knits now with my white just to help pop them out a little more. So I think this looks pretty good. You can see the cable knit. We definitely get a sense of the shadow side. At this point, what is left will be later on. We'll come back and we'll ink this to really get it to pop off the page. Just for reference, you can see, here's what it looked like from the back 
with all of our markers. And now we finished it here on the front with our color pencils. All right, let's move down into doing her face and her hair. If you want to get a little bit of practice before we go and do the hair on your model, we can come over here and do a swatch of it really quick. Go ahead and turn your paper over and take out whatever color you used for your hair color. And watch me first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a teardrop shape. So it's going to start tight and coming out onto the paper below it. We'll let that dry just a little bit. Come back and we'll hit our mid-tones. Again, you're starting at a tip and then you're blending away as you come out. So it's like doing a, um, like a star shape. So what we're doing is we're making it dark here at the tip top and then it's lighter as it comes out down below. All right, let's turn this over and we'll do a practice on her hair. Before I get started, I just want to come in and find a highlight, a mid-tone, and a dark tone from my browns, and then I'll decide on which one I'm going to use. Now when I take a look at these a little bit closer, the bright yellow is definitely too yellow, the orange I don't like. Between these mid-tones, I don't want it to be too red, so I kind of like this third one from the bottom right here. So I'm going to choose that from my mid-tone. And my dark tone, I like this one here. And for my highlights, I think I'm going to just stick with using my white color pencil. We're going to do this flat on the tabletop, so there's no sandpaper or texture behind this. I'm going to start with my darkest color, I'll move to my lighter color, and then I'll finish with my highlights. Now this area here is going to be like a, a starting point. It's similar to where if this was a sun shining, that's going to be your starting point for your, uh, your dark tones. And as you come out, you want to stop coloring out in this area. So it's just darker as we go into that point. Now what I'll do is I'll switch to my mid-tone. In my mid-tone strokes, I'm going to start pushing towards that area. So I'm kind of like pushing that dark back into itself. Again, I'm leaving this highlight area. I want to see some of the natural paper showing through. And I'm leaving room also now for my highlights. Now the highlights are going to all start out here and travel again towards the dark area, but it never makes it all the way into there. So I'm going to start out here and push back towards the dark area and we have our highlights. Now the very first color pencil that we use is starting to disappear. So what I can do is come back and stack this a second time on top of the white and on top of my mid-tone. And at this point now I'm going to stop so it doesn't get too muddy and I don't have too much color pencil. And I also want to make sure some of the natural paper is still showing through. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and start shading her hair using the same techniques that we just practiced right here. I also want to have a piece of paper covering all of this up so I don't start smearing some of this color pencil all over my project. We also want to keep in mind where the light source is. Now if it helps what you can do is come into here where this would be the darkest area of her hair. It's away from the light source and it's going behind her chin, behind her neck. 
The same thing we did on our swatch where we were starting at a point and then we were moving out from that point. That's gonna be up in here by her ear and her jawline. And then I'm gonna to switch to my mid-tones. Again, I'm pushing my mid-tone back into that darker area. And I'll do the same thing with my highlight. I'm gonna start out here, and I'm gonna push back into the dark part. I don't want to get too crazy. I want some of the natural paper to still show through. I'm going to get my pencil nice and sharp, and I'm going to get this dark area just one last time on t back on top of the white and on top of the mid-tone. And mostly because my girl is a brunette, so I'm kind of emphasizing the brown hair. Now I can come up into here where her hair is coming out of her beanie. And I want to start to get a few little stray strands of hair. And then I want to also emphasize it's a little bit blonde here going over her eye and her ear. So basically I'll do the same thing on this side. Even though this side has the light source, it's still going to be really dark all behind her neck and her jawline. Also up here, I have one little strand that's going across her eyes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just get a little fine pin line for what would be the shadow of that hair. And then I'll do another fine pin line above that to show kind of a highlight. And then out here I'll get a few more little flyaway hairs. I also want to come back and just touch up on her lips just to give it a little more definition from the front of the page. For the whites of her eyes, I'm just going to touch it up with a little bit of white color pencil and that'll help make that the color of her eye really pop out. And then later we'll go in and we'll ink these and when we're inking it that's when we'll do some eyelashes and eyebrows and we'll also finish getting this little bit of hair down in front of her eye. And I want to find a flesh tone that matches back to my her skin tone so I can do a little bit of touching up here on her cheekbone. And here I'm just doing a little bit of a cover up where I accidentally got some of her hair color onto her face skin. I can also use this to pop a little bit of a highlight on the tip of her nose. And I'm putting a little bit of white on her lips. Just doing these really short vertical lines so it looks kind of like a glossy highlight but also following with the creases that you naturally have in your lips. Now some of my sh uh, students like to also come back and hit it a little bit more with some cheek color or some eyeshadow. For me personally, I don't even bother with any of that, especially when I start throwing in my eyelashes, it all gets covered up anyways. All right, so I think this looks good for her hair, face, and beanie, and all that's left in this is to ink it later. All right, take a minute now to clean up your area, move all your color pencils out of the way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move down and start working on her jacket.
let's come down here to our swatch and what we're going to do is we're going to find some color pencils to match for our highlights, mid-tones, and shadows. Alright, so taking a look here at my marker swatch that matches back to my jacket swatch, we want to find some highlights, mid-tones, and shadows to go with this. Now for the sandpaper, I still want to use my chunkiest sandpaper. So this is the 60 grit, has the most uh, texture to it to represent this big thick jacket. What I'm going to do now is I want to come in here and find what color pencils do I want to use for my highlights, midtones, and shadows. Alright, so taking a look at this, I think I'll keep the green kind of teal color for my midtone to go along with this sea foamy green color that this already has. For my highlights, this fabric here really reflects light back to your eye. So to me, this is picking up as being white. So I'll use white for my highlights. And then down here in the shadows, I don't want it to get too blue looking like this, but I don't want it to get too black looking here with this very dark indigo. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move up to this lighter, slightly lighter shade of my darker blue to be the shadows. And then if I don't like it, if it looks too bright, I can always come back and knock it down with one of these two. So let's start with these three for now. Now as I slide my sandpaper in here, once I start coloring this jacket with color pencil from the front, the sandpaper behind here cannot move. Now her elbow sticks out a little bit here and her jacket sticks out here. So what I'm doing is I'm turning the sandpaper a little bit at an angle to make sure I get this elbow in both points on her jacket. I also have my paper taped down so it doesn't move and the sandpaper behind there will not move. Now if we take a look at the swatch here, you can see that what this fabric is, is it's a whole bunch of little swirls and it's kind of a fur texture. Now if we were to go in and just start drawing a whole bunch of swirls and little fur textures, this is going to get really confusing really fast. The main thing that you need is we already established the base color with our markers from the back. Now on the front, we want to make this look like it's got a thick texture to it. So with the color pencils and the sandpaper, we're going to come in here and we're going to get our nice thick texture. And then at the very end, we'll add a few swirls in the highlights and down in the shadow areas. And all you need is about 75% representing back to the swatch. The most important thing is, is a sample sewer should be able to look at the jacket and look at this piece of fabric and know that this is the same thing. So you don't have to draw it totally perfect as if though this is going to be printed in a magazine or something. Now on this drawing, if you remember from the front, we had lightly drawn everything in in pencil. If there's anything at this point that you want to erase, you'll need to do it right now. Now here on the front, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and erase that line because on the jacket, there's no seam right there and I don't want the sample sewers to get confused on why I drew a bust line cup. At some point when you're drawing jackets, you should determine if you want to have a waist seam dart, a side seam dart, a princess panel, or a French dart inside of here. Now because this fabric is really thick and fluffy, pretty much the dart is going to be hidden when it's sewn in there. And I personally don't have a preference on where the dart comes from to get this fit. So what I'm going to do on my rendering is I'm not going to put any kind of a dart inside of here and I'll let the pattern maker and the sample sewers decide what would be best for this fabric. Now I'm taking a look at my drawing. There's nothing else left that I want to erase in pencil so I'm going to go ahead and get my sandpaper in place and then we can start coloring this.
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my midtones and my shadows. Over here is the light source. So I'm going to come over here to underneath her hand, the belt, and this side of the extension on her jacket. Now, so what you can see is I'm coming in and I'm doing a mix of my darker tone and my kind of turquoisey green color. And I'm getting my texture on the jacket as well as some shadowing. And if there's any touching up that I want to do on her hand, I have to do that after I pull the sandpaper out of here. Now the color pencils that I'm laying down for my darks and midtones are starting to really change the color of my fabric and it's getting a little bit too blue and a little bit too dark. What I can do then is I can finish by hitting this with my white color pencil and I'll start knocking down all of that darkness and also the white color pencil is giving it a nice pop highlight color and it's adding to the texture. Now what we're going to do, we're going to move to the other side of her body. Again, this is the area where the light source is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my highlight color pencil. In this instance, I'm using my white. Now the first thing I want to do is lay down some texture, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start hitting some of my mid-tones. And uh, you can see down here I'm working all through the creases and the folds and I'm switching between my mid-tones and dark tones. And now I want to come back and hit it some more with my highlights to emphasize those areas where the light source is. Now I'm going to switch over to this side of the jacket and get some of my highlights down here as well. And then if I got too much, I can always come back and tone it down with my mid-tones as well as my dark tones. Go ahead and do yours now. Now what I want to do is I want to come up into the bodice part of her jacket. And again, I'm going to start here on the cast shadow side of her jacket with my mid-tone. I was also noticing that my blue uh, dark tone is a little too blue. I kind of don't like it, so I, I prefer this mid-tone a little bit better. It's got more green in it. Now once I lay down my mid-tones, I'm going to come in and start hitting my highlights. And then eventually what I'll do is I'll switch to the other side of the jacket. Again, always remembering that this is the side where the light source is. So this side of the jacket is going to be a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter. So you can see I lay down my textures. I come back and I hit it with my mid-tones. And then I switch back to my highlights all out on the light side of the jacket. All right, so go ahead and do this now. All right, once you're done with the texture, let's go ahead and clean off our color pencils. And then let's remove the sandpaper from behind and take a closer look at this. All right, so when I look at this jacket compared back to the swatch, the jacket itself is starting to get pretty dark looking and a little bit too blue looking. Now what we can do is once we pull out the sandpaper and we're just working on our flat tabletop surface, we can come in with white and start to knock down some of these shadows and blend them into the highlighted areas. But keep in mind, since the sandpaper is not there, if you were to just start coloring over everything, you're going to lose all of these little tiny texture dots. So that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for working in the shadow areas and just getting this to, to calm down a little bit because it got a little bit too dark. Let's come up in this area and I'll show you how. So here I want to really emphasize the corners of these collars are sticking out in the light the top of her sleeve here and then I can tone down the shadowing for her bust behind her arm and then if I want to come back I can just come back underneath these collars just to emphasize that this is shadows from the collar on her jacket
Now again, I'm, I'm trying to keep my original texture from the sandpaper so I'm not going over the whole jacket. And I can emphasize some of these wrinkles Let's come over to this side here. So the roll on her lapel, we have a little more of a highlight on it and the collar. I want to tone down these shadows just a little bit. They're getting just a little too blue looking. Now in this area, all underneath her hand, got it got very blue looking. So I'm going to take a lot of white and just really knock that down. Same thing down in this area. And here where her jacket is rolling out and coming through here, I want to really pop that. So I'm going to get some white all the way through here to really emphasize that that's rolling out. And her hip right here out in the spotlight. And this is a little flap side seam pocket. I'm going to just emphasize the flap right there. I'm going to tone this corner down a little bit here as well. In this area where her hand got a little bit too blue and I knocked it down with some white, I want to see if I can get just a little bit of a green back in there. So over here I'm going to test my two different green options. This one's definitely too yellow, I don't like that. This, this one has a little more blue in it. And I'll come back in here in between her fingers and stuff and just bring a little bit of that green back. And because I'm doing all of this flat on the tabletop, I pretty much completely lost all of my texture. So I'm going to put a little sandpaper behind here See if I can just get a little bit of that texture back. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just finishing up some of the texture and color on my jacket. So far I haven't done the swirl pattern, so I'm gonna show you how to do that next. <laughs> 